No warning. There is no warning for this video because I believe if you are watching this, you are sensible enough. However, please be aware, the only thing we know is that we don't know. So please question everything, except for the laws of physics. Let us please get into Lotus position. All right, you ready, Leo? Yes, we are ready. The majority of those they interviewed first heard voices during a period of emotional turmoil or following a traumatic experience of some kind. When the voices appeared, they typically provoked feelings of confusion, panic and powerlessness. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that quote in a minute or 15. In the meantime, let me ask you this. Are you able to relate to that quote? Whenever you first heard voices, leprechauns, were you struggling emotionally or with something traumatic? Definitely that was the case for me, but we are going to go back to that soon. What's happening, leprechauns? I am Leo the Leprechaun and I like lemons. Do you remember when you had to play that game? You'd be sitting there in like a new group you have to congregate in a circle and in order to introduce yourself to everyone else you have to say my name is Leo and then you have to say something you like beginning with that letter you know I kind of wish I could go back in time and change my answer to all that usually I just chose something basic like hi I'm Leo and I like lions if only I could have gone back and I could have said hey my name's Leo and I like liars <gasps> Can you imagine the faces of them whenever I say that? I like liars. Who the fuck likes a liar? <laughs> nah, I am joking. I like honest people. And that's why I be honest when I can. And whenever I catch myself saying a white lie, I try to correct it. Because honesty is the best policy. Anyway, leprechauns, in today's video, we're going to be talking about why do we hear voices? But of course you already know that because you've read the title. What the fuck, Leo? You're supposed to be a news anchor, not a one. So, why do we hear voices? The real answer to that is, I don't know. And since doing some research into it, I can confirm that a lot of other people don't know too. Prehistorically, you know, like, it would have been a way for shamans to communicate with the outer realm. However, we're not going to be going into that today. We're going to be referencing from Richard Bentle's book, Madness Explained. I've got that right here. So in this book, Richard Bentle, fair play to him, he's done some incredible research here. He must have spent hours doing this. And today we're looking at three references to do with why we hear voices. Following that, I'm going to give you my belief on why we hear voices because it is quite different. Okay, so stay tuned. To start this off, Leprechauns, we're gonna be referencing two guys called Ivan and Phil. Hello, Ivan and Phil. So Ivan and Phil conducted a load of interviews with people who heard voices. They found that the most common form of auditory hallucination was where the voices were giving instructions to the person hearing the voices. Something scary like, go tidy your room. Other forms of auditory hallucinations included inner debates. This would be like talking back and forth with your voices. This is what I experienced the most. And finally, the other form of auditory hallucination is where the voices would judge you from their point of view. So for example, if you're walking down the street, the voice might say, Oh my god, why are you walking like that? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Fuck those guys, right? <laughs> Richard Bentle's conclusion from this is that auditory hallucinations are inner speech. So, from my understanding here, Richard Bentle concluding that auditory hallucinations are inner speech is that he is saying the auditory hallucinations are the same as inner speech. Like inner speech is like the way that you would talk to yourself. So leprechauns, here's a question for you. Do you think 
the, the voices you heard were the same as your inner speech? Write that down in the comments. Some further research then to support Bentle's conclusion that auditory hallucinations are the same or in speech is we look at three psychiatrists, three British psychiatrists. We've got Maguire, which is an Irish name, Shah, and Murray. They took a load of brain scans. EEGs, ECGs, PMIFRTY, GLA test B. Okay, that's not a real brain scan, you can't me. It's actually EMGs, EEGs, SPETs, and PETs. So they took a load of brain scans from people who experienced hallucinations, including one person who was not on drugs of the pharmaceutical sort. Get on you, lad. Whenever these psychiatrists put these people who experienced the hallucinations under the brain scan, they find that whenever the person was experiencing hallucinations, the hallucinations came from the same part of the brain as speech would or sight would. So for example, whenever the person heard a voice, the same part of the brain was activated as if they had heard a person speaking in front of them. And so Bentle believes that this supports the theory that auditory hallucinations are the same as inner speech. Now, leprechauns, part of this is really cool research, right? You know, it is awesome to see that on a brain scan, the same part of the brain lights up as if it was a hallucination, as if it was in real person. And so, Bentle's conclusion that auditory hallucinations are the same as inner speech, you know, this might not be correct. I'll tell you why. Because just because they come from the same place does not mean they are the same. For example, inside of a tree, what kind of insects are you going to find inside of a tree? You're going to find woodlice, you're going to find ants, you're going to find all sorts of little critters inside of there. But all of those wee insects, are they the same? No, of course they're fucking not. You know, they may be the same family, insects, insects not a family, but you know what I mean. And so that does not mean that the auditory hallucinations are the same as inner speech. You know, maybe they are, but probably not. Okay, and for the final reference for today, we're going to be looking at a psychiatrist from Yale University. Oh, Yale! He must be a smart boy! A psychiatrist called Ralph. <laughs> the Yale psychiatrist suggests if patients who hallucinate have difficulty planning speech, this might lead them to experiencing unintended speech and therefore alien to themselves. Okay, so Ralph here is saying that those who hallucinate may have struggle planning their speech and when they have struggle planning their speech, they may unintentionally have a thought and then that thought may seem alien to them. So, it sounds much more like Ralph is inquiring here into intrusive thoughts rather than hallucinations because the unintended speech, that is much more with what an intrusive thought is like. And we're not going to go into that today because that's a whole new world of the brain and psychosis, but, and more than psychosis actually, but we're going to go back to see what Ralph said here. People who experience hallucinations are mistaking their own thoughts and imaginings for things they are hearing or seeing. Mistaking their own thoughts for things they are imagining or seeing. What the fuck? <laughs> now, from having experienced hallucinations. For a psychiatrist who has not experienced hallucinations, to tell me that what I am experiencing 
is me mistaking it? It's offensive. Uh, it's very ignorant of him. I would love to witness how much compassion and love and understanding he shows to his patients. Because Ralph, I'm sorry mate, but you're talking so much shit. Needless to say, maybe it is a mistake, but what do you think, leprechauns? From you having experienced hallucinations, do you honestly believe that it is a mistake? That you've misinterpreted your own inner dialogue? That you've misinterpreted the environment around you? Yeah, please write your answer to that in the comments because honestly, the more people that spoke about that, the more data that we would be able to collect in order to research to see if this guy Ralph is in fact a prick. And on top of that, to see if there are other solutions in order to help with these voices. Now, fair play to Richard Bentle here, right? Richard Bentle actually does say that he met a Dutch psychiatrist or psychologist, I can't remember, and he said to him, you know, the problem is not necessarily hearing voices, it is the reaction to them. And that was definitely the case for me. You know, I was able to survive a couple of months while hearing voices. And I went along as if it was a game, effectively. But it was my reaction to the voices that led me to being in hospital. Here is my belief on why we hear voices. I believe that it is actually the brain trying to heal itself. And in order to describe this, I'm going to give you a metaphor. So imagine your finger, right? Here. You can see a little cut there. Now, whenever this cut happened, blood came out. And what happened after the blood came out? Eventually, the blood stopped and my body began to heal itself. It started to create a scalp. And then eventually if this cut is big enough, it will create a scar and the body heals itself. Now, who is to say that this is not the same as the brain? My belief is that the brain, our brains, have been damaged. For example, I've had some trauma in my life. I've had a lot of impact to my brain, been concussed three times. I've taken also quite a lot of drugs in my life and all of these contributing factors they are putting pressure on the brain, making it unhealthy. If anything, it makes sense that my brain would want to heal itself, considering the damage that I am doing to it. And so who is to say that these voices are not the brain's reaction because of our actions that have caused the damage to our brain? That's why I believe it is so vitally important in order for you to recover from hearing voices or having psychosis that you do not take medication. Because by taking medication, you are effect blocking the process of your brain healing itself. Over time, I believe your brain will heal itself. You can also speed up this process, I believe, by giving yourself the healthiest brain possible by adding in factors such as diet, sleep, exercise, and many other things. But that's just my belief. What is your belief, Leprechauns? What do you think is the reason that we hear voices? Thank you so much for listening, Leprechauns. I love you all. God bless. Goodbye. Slad.